what has been the key to you being able to continue to do this and not getting that feeling of I'm bored, this is old, this is just, I'm burnt out? I think the key for me anyway has been learning to let go and bring in more people. Some of the best decisions we made for the company were to hire people who are more talented than us, people who are funnier. Our most successful decisions involved collaboration and bringing more expertise into the fold instead of assuming that because we started the thing, because we created the thing, that we are the ones who know like, where it should go and what, what the next short should be about. Welcome to To The Moon with me, The Stock Guy, and The D-Gens. Uh, we're here every week. We deep dive into conversations about life, finance, stocks, and careers with a unique and talented guest. Um, today's guest, guys, if you've been on the internet in the last 15 years, uh, you may not know who he is, but you'll know what he does. And he is the co-creator of Cyanide and Happiness. It is a comic that everyone who's ever been on the internet has seen in some capacity. He's also the co-founder of Explosum, uh, which is the website that is all things Cyanide happiness and one of the ogs of humor on the internet as well as the recipient of so many cringe interviews that i saw on youtube hopefully we can add to that badge of honor ladies and gentlemen boys and girls djs alike welcome in rob den blaker to to the moon how you doing today sir hey i am doing okay and i want to apologize for being so so late um I i'm late to my stream every day they're used to it Okay, I feel better now. I woke up with back pain, and I took some meds, and then I woke up five minutes ago. So I apologize, oh, but it's, it's good uh, to be here. Was it, Thank was you it for good, having was me. Was it good stuff? It was good stuff. I won't tell you what it is because it's not technically That's... legal in my in my state. But <laughs> thanks for having nice, me. Nice, yeah. nice. And I'm not going to ask what state that is. Plausible deniability. I'm going to be honest Thank with you. you. This is the first time I've seen you without a beard. Are you the right guy? Yes. Um, I go back and forth between clean shaven and beard whenever I'm bored. Uh, I know I've been working from home for a year and a half, so we have to you know, entertain ourselves. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure because uh, I was watching some interviews uh, of you online, uh, you know, yesterday to try to kind of like, you know, get an idea of, of, of like, you know, questions you've answered, what you haven't answered. And I saw mm -hmm. you were at a comic con in India. Is that correct? Yeah. Many years ago. I went there a few times to, to Bangalore, Delhi and Mumbai. So my wife is actually Indian, and uh, she's she's originally from Delhi. Uh, but I saw the interview where there was a guy who was, I guess he was trying to be like a shock factor interview, and he kept asking you if he wanted to like bang him or something, and then he tried offering you food, and and I'm just like, how did you get through that? Like, was that was that entire experience just so awkward, or did you like was that like the, uh, a very very isolated incident? <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, lots of people in India offered me food, and that was great. Like the people oh, they're there, so <laughs> friendly. Man. They're so friendly, very nice. And yeah, I mean, honestly, like those conventions in India were the farthest conventions I've been to. Like that was literally like the other side of the planet, like a twelve-hour time difference. But once, like, I set foot through the doors, like of the Comic Con, like it was like being in San Diego or New York Comic Con. Like the fans there, the geeks, like it's it's everyone's the same, like everywhere in the world, and they were just yeah, super welcoming. I didn't even realize that that there was a Comic Con in India. Like I, 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 when I saw that interview, I was like, "Holy crap!" There's Comic Con in India, and then I saw you were at one in Lithuania. I was like, "My God!" Mm -hmm. There's Comic Cons everywhere. I, I, and then I started feeling bad. I'm like, I don't even get invited to like the you know Omaha Comic Con, <laughs> like 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 let alone one in another country. So I just thought that that was awesome. And uh, I'm actually may go to my first Twitch Con. I've never been a fan of going to conventions just because I, I just I always feel out of place. But uh, I feel like I'm getting I'm warming up to it, and I saw that you just go you've been in this for what how long have you guys been on 15 15 years now yeah the comic's been going for 16 years 2005 so we've been going to conventions oh, for funny. probably just as long all over the place what's your favorite convention moment like do you have one that just like you just never forget oh, i mean honestly like yeah india comic-con was probably up there because i was in a plane for 24 hours like i was expecting like to just be in a foreign country where like nobody knew me and stuff and then like the lines were like around the around the block for the Sunday and Happiness booth, and I was just blown away that I was the furthest I could possibly be from being at home if I without going to outer space, and I was just surrounded by like these this friendly supporting fans. So yeah, that was that was mind blowing for sure. Yeah, uh, I, I my my first trip to India was uh, when when we had our wedding, and uh, you know it was like you said, it was such like a a whole other world. But for the most part, everyone was just so nice and so accommodating, and, and and people were just so you know friendly, and it was it was it was it was amazing. And that's why I was watching the uh, that that one that one guy's interview, and I was just like, 
that had to just make it, you know, because everybody like 99.9%, but there's always that one guy who wants to like step out a little bit. And, and speaking of people that are always trying to be different, act different, you know, I was reading some of the uh, background uh, on, uh, on, on Sinai of Happiness. I was looking at, you know, when you guys like kind of started it and, and, and where it grew from. And mm-hmm. um, it brought me back because the first thing it said that you guys had uh, one of your inspirations <laughs> was far side. And I hadn't thought about far side in 20 years like i mean i remember growing up watching the far looking at the far side comments and i thought they were hilarious did, did mm-hmm. that, like like did, did, you, did you guys ever like talk to Lar- mr what is it dan larson what was his name again don larson gary larson gary um, larson, gary larson. I, I had the bad last name right <laughs> no I, i've never met him but um he, one, there was this time like a year ago where farside.com was made he started like the far side became a webcomic which i think is cool i'm, I'm glad that they're, they're progressing um, into the modern era and he started posting ads for the farside.com on our website which was really cool nice. like my childhood hero was like indirectly like supporting me like, by, by buying ads on my site um so th- that, that was that was pretty cool but no i've never got the chance to meet him um, but that's yeah, gotta he, happen uh, Farside was a huge inspiration calvin and Hobbes, like all those like kind of twisted cynical comics that i grew up on so you, you know also in there you guys had talked about also i went to the cyanide and happiness wiki for you and i realized halfway through it was it was it was it was satirical like i was like always gets made fun of for being overweight and i was like looking at pictures i'm like that doesn't make any sense. And then it's <laughs> yeah. like i was going through this and then i was like and then you know screaming depression and i'm like he seems and then I thought to myself, OK, I finally realized that this was fake. But then I started realizing, you know, in some of the notes, it was saying that you started drawing comics when you're like 11 or 12. And um, and then and then, you know, you you were summer camp counselor. Like, like, can you give me like a quick TLDR of how, you know, little Rob goes from doodling cartoons to this massive, you know, comic? Like, like, like where was the progression? Where was the where was the pivot there? Oh man. Okay. So let's go way, way back uh, all the way like before animation. So like when I was about 12, 13 years old, I got really, really into MIDI composition, like, you know, MIDI music, M I D I. Um, I would just compose music for the, for, for, um, just on the computer. I would just write these weird songs and post them on the internet. And I ended mm-hmm. up through that. I met this guy who's like, Hey, I'm making this thing called a flash animation. Like it needs some music. Uh, and then he showed me what he was working on. Of course, like, I was 13. I was too young to be doing work for hire. So I did it for free. Uh, and then I watched the final project. It was, like it was these, it was for this chat room he made called like Raptor chat and had all these Velociraptors dancing around and moving and biting and stuff. And I thought, well, like, holy shit, like this, this is like real animation on the internet. Like I'd never seen anything like that. This was 2000, 2001, maybe even 99. Um, but of course, like I had to do it. So I pirated a copy of flash four, by the way, yeah, don't don't pirate software. <laughs> he uh, he he legally downloaded. <laughs> Go ahead. But if you're also a kid and you, and you want to borrow some some software from the internet, Rob, you wouldn't download um, a car, would you? <laughs> I would if I could. But uh, yeah, so I got Flash Four, and I spent like instead of making friends and going to parties, I was spent high school just learning how to animate and posting my stuff on a website called Newgrounds.com, which was the precursor to YouTube. Newgrounds um, it was just this incredible um, community of animators who were just all also kids for the most part, just um, making cartoons and posting them online. So it kind of gave me my first sense of like, of posting something on the internet and then getting feedback from complete strangers. Uh, so like that is kind of um, a thing that most people these days, most creators kind of are, they take for granted. But back then Newgrounds was the only place where you could actually do that. So I would every week out or so I would post um, a new stick figure cartoon um, wait for the reviews to come in see if I got number one of the day the next day. And yeah, that's how I got hooked. I got hooked on creating stuff online. And through that experience, I met um, Matt, Chris, Dave, the other guys who we would eventually start sign on happiness with in, in college. So that's the, that's the that's, backstory. And- you're bringing me back with all those names. Like I just started thinking about like E bombs world and like, right, yeah. like, like MySpace, <laughs> like that. Like, I mean, we're boomers, man. Like, like I'm on Twitch with all these people who like, they hear this stuff and like, you know, like I'm thinking of LimeWire and how I would always go to someone else's house to do it. Cause mm-hmm. it crashed the computer. So like I'd right. go burn music at their house, never at mine. And like, as I was doing it, I was waiting for like the FBI to kick down the door. So I was, I, you're just bringing me like all this PTSD, by the way, guys, don't forget go exclamation point comic. Uh, 
um, is going to send you to uh, the Sinai and, and, and uh, Happiness uh, website where you can put together your very own, you know, comic, a three panel comic from Sinai Happiness. We're going to review some of them at the end today and they're going to tweet out the best one. So far, what I've seen, none of it can be tweeted out in any way <laughs> because it, I mean, it must be able to because it's on your website. But the stuff that, oh my God, it's just so bad. Remember, guys, if you do want to go into the Discord under channel art or uh, to the moon comics 2021 at gmail.com, they're going to filter through them and we are going to uh, have one that is picked up. All right, back uh, into where you were in high school. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I never was able to draw. I'm still not able to draw. My, my 11 month old daughter is actually able to draw a better person than I am. Um, <laughs> and so when I was in high school, I also used to draw a lot really badly. Uh, and the reason was, is because um, I, I just, I was, I had terrible ADHD. Uh, and also I was very, uh, I was very awkward for a lot of reasons. I, I was dealing with a lot of personal stuff. I was bullied because uh, I, you know, whatever. I had a lot of this. It was kind of like my out. It was kind of my way of focusing my ADHD in a way and also getting out some of that built up emotions. And then I found a friend of mine who was really messed up in the head and he would draw and I would put the bubble in and we would laugh and laugh and laugh at that. <laughs> so I'm wondering when you guys started doing this, did you notice that you were able because I I know it's really edgy and there's a lot of dark humor in there. Did you find that you were like it was like a way of 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 also letting out some of that repression or some of that like uh, uh, built up you know I don't know like feelings or whatever? Do you feel like it was like an outlet? Kind of and um, yeah, my co-writer Chris like we get this question at conventions like why are like why are your comics so messed up and offensive like and then like. Chris's answer I always like because he, he said it's um like we're not trying to make offensive material we're just slightly offensive people trying to be funny and I think like that's that's absolutely the case growing up we all have twisted senses of humor and when the strip started we didn't have any readers like there was just us it was the four of us and maybe like I don't know like a fifty or sixty people on the forums that on our website reading so it was a very very tiny audience like we weren't trying to entertain anybody except each other and I think um. That's sort of been our philosophy since, like, ha have an audience that's basically you and the people you want to make laugh that you can picture. And then it forgets the thousands of strangers reading it. Because if you're entertaining yourself and entertaining your friends, then, like, in theory, you're making something genuinely funny and you're not trying to sell out or pander. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's our approach is just entertaining ourselves and thinking small. Holy shit, that hit home. Because mm -hmm. with me with stocks and stuff, like I, I've always I always have a hard time with my stream where it's like, am I being too meme and degenerate? Am I being too boring and educational? Mm -hmm. Am I <clears throat> funny enough? Am I going too far? And holy shit, you're right. It's just like if you're doing stuff that you think is funny and people, other people watch it, just focus on those people, not all the other people, because you're never going to make everybody mm -hmm. happy. So, wow. Thanks, yeah. Rob. Appreciate the Especially uh, these the days with YouTube. Post. It's like it's, YouTube's taking that to a fever pitch where you can't post anything without thousands of people com literally commenting saying, here's the next thing you should make. You know, so it's, it's you have to sort of filter all that and take take the feedback, good or bad. But, yeah, make something that's true to yourself at the end. Yeah, and, and in that way, you don't end up ever feeling like you're a sellout and you hate everything. And the reason I was asking yeah. that question was before is because I've noticed that, you know, I, I use my humor and my dark sense of humor as kind of a projection of a way of, like, dealing with with either pain or insecurities or things that I always found. And so that's why I was wondering, like, you know, you guys kind of, like, had this idea in the beginning of, like, where – I'm not trying to get too personal of, like, where it came from. But I just noticed that, like, you hit a mark. And you guys started the beginning of the internet. So when you guys started this, <clears throat> where was the point where you realized that this could potentially go from, you know, just a hobby – to something we could make some money, maybe not rich, but maybe make some money. Where was that? Where was that point for you? I'm very curious because I feel like that's always the the make or break mm -hmm. moment for people. Yeah. So the, the strip started in earnest in 2005. So I would have been, I was a freshman in college. So I, I think around 2006 or seven, when I was a sophomore or junior, that's when I remember that it was it was earning some money, like not enough to live off of, but enough to you know cover maybe going out to eat once a week or, you know, mm -hmm. part, half of my rent all of a sudden was being covered by like the ads that we were putting around the comics. And I think that was the tipping point where I started like shifting my focus from like, I was, I still went to class and I still studied cause I, I was sort of like at one point, um, senior year, I told my mom I wanted to drop out and she yelled at me. So like I, I, I high school with, or with college, the, college. Cause okay. I, everything was making, cause I was thinking like, I've already got this thing, you know, like I'm studying, you know, computer animation and video games. Like, I'm not going to use that. Um, yeah, I didn't. I was, I was right. 
<laughs> but, but like, there's, but that's there's right, point mom. Like you shouldn't start something without finishing it, and she's right. Um, but yeah, around sophomore or junior year, that's when I noticed that we were making like a, a little bit of money off the comics, which was surprising because very few people like cross that threshold. I think there's more professional mm -hmm. rock stars than there are professional web comic artists. So like, <laughs> I would imagine, yeah. So um, yeah, at that point, I started like shifting my focus more in, into the into the comics and started thinking mm -hmm. about the business aspect. Um, I started bringing in like more like freelance, like some of our friends to freelance on stuff like merchandise. We started doing like five or six conventions a year and seeing what we could do there. But yeah, it was it was in college when I started making that, that transition, that realization. I think the first time I realized that the comic itself like was something was probably San Diego Comic Con 2007. We um we went there and a friend of ours had a booth, so we decided to do like an hour long signing session when he was at lunch. So we mm -hmm. sat there for an hour. We put on the posted about it on the internet, and like like literally hundreds of people like signed up or lined up. Sorry to get um to get hand drawn sketches from us. Like that was the first time we ever met like our readers in person. Because before that, mm -hmm. like it's just numbers on a screen, right? <laughs> but you know, yeah, sitting there and seeing no, people actually sure. come Especially... up and say, I, "I read your stuff. Your stuff's funny." Like that, it's just so much different. Yeah, I, I I was going back memory lane when I was doing the research because I was seeing these old comics that I remember, especially from the first mm. days of the internet. And that's why I was asking you about the first time with the with 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 something that could be a potential because you were originally when you guys started. I mean, internet was still kind of new for this, and especially for comics on the internet. Mm. I mean, it was it was all about the newspapers back then. I remember opening the newspaper, going to the comic <laughs> section, and that's where the money was. So. You know, you guys could have gone that route, but you decided the internet was the future kind of thing, right? Yeah, kind of. It was more we, less we decided, and le and more that like no newspaper in the world would would print us. I think uh, my college oh. paper rejected me too. And this was after the strip was popular, <laughs> so I think it was the material may have held us back. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Like the old internet was was so different. Like you, if you liked something, you would go to a website that you liked. And if you liked that website, you would bookmark it or remember it and go back later to watch, to look at it again the next day. It wasn't like social media, like here's my feed, like just feed me content, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, it was, yeah, back when the internet had like, was very website centric. I think that's when we really benefited. We were able to take advantage of like MySpace um, content. Like we, we encouraged people to share our comics on MySpace, eventually on Facebook. Um, yeah, pre-2013 internet, like, <laughs> Take me back. <laughs> I want to be there. Is it is it is it just me or is it nostalgia or was MySpace just better? MySpace was better. There was a time when Facebook was better, but it probably only lasted like three years before Facebook became evil. But yeah, I, I do like MySpace. I think my I think history. I, I just I remember the MySpace biggest problem I had was who was in your top eight, right? And then yeah. I realized that nobody actually cared if I if they were in my top eight, and I was sad. But other than that, like it's like it's like it's like who was in your top eight? Like that's the biggest thing you had to worry about. I loved MySpace, and I, I was just thinking about it. So. You guys get into inter you guys get into the internet in the beginning, and a lot of people would say, "Well, it's easier to be successful when you're in the beginning of something because there's less competition." But it's not always true because sometimes when you're at the beginning of it, nobody watch there's, there's a, you're the only one there, and nobody's going to pay attention to it. So it's a little mm. bit of a trade off. Like you got more eyes now, but you have more competition, and that's how I feel as a streamer sometimes. And I was thinking to myself, you guys came in as the OG, you know, when the comics there. Now there's a million comics about a million different things. So you guys not only were first there. But I always tell people, like in my case, and I'm sure you guys had the same case, it became a, you are going to be the person others learn their mis uh, the mistakes not to make going forward, right? Like you're the trailblazer. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to be the first one there, but you're also going to have the mistakes that people are going to learn from. So wh what was the roughest, like, was there a super low point where like you guys wanted to give up or you thought maybe this was, you were going to fail or, you know, you were just outdated because you guys have managed to stay relevant for this long. There had to have been some low times. Like, was there any point? during this that it was just like almost called it quits um we didn't get to the point where we almost called it quits but there were definitely some moments where we were ready to give up on like certain possibilities and projects like like tv pitches for example like there was we've been to la like five or six times to, to genuinely pitch tv shows we've been rejected mm -hmm. five or six times <laughs> like it's it sucks oh, wow. um like it's it's a really hard place to to be um and yeah, that's kind of what led to the beginning of our shows. We went to we went to LA twice to pitch like all over the place, like Comedy Central, even G four, like back in the day. <laughs> this was uh -huh. ancient history. But yeah, I think that was 
to put in so much effort into a show and then like present it to, to, to rooms full of people like for 30 minutes and then either hear back like it's not what we're looking for or just not hear back at all like i think that's that was probably one of the hardest periods for us um yeah. but like there's a silver lining because we ended up going to kickstarter instead and that sort of launched like the youtube channel so um well yeah yeah nothing I mean, you like guys are still rocking still, and rolling yeah and it's still happening like our most recent rejected pitch was like a year ago so like we're, we haven't quite given up we've just sort of recalibrated our expectations well part of it too is is that you guys have kind of been through a huge shift now mm -hmm. south park i hate to bring up south park but south park is one of the few out there that are continuing to do it but other than that everyone has kind of been forced in a way through advertisers and whatnot to conform to the way society has changed you guys have stayed true with your brash edgy you know pushing the envelope not crossing the thing and a lot of things that were okay in society or on the internet 15 years ago are taboo now but you guys have managed <laughs> to keep the line so how often is there a call for you guys to get canceled like it has to be all the time um, it's been, <laughs> it's been a bunch of like micro cancels, like more than anything big. Like, um, you mentioned like we're tr true to ourselves. We can do whatever we want. And that, that is true. Like the comics we make on our website are still whatever we feel like. Like we have no editors. We don't censor ourselves, but places like Facebook, like we have had to adjust our archive. We have gotten dinged and gotten threatened by Facebook. So now we have like a different set of comics that we post on Facebook than we do on the site. We still draw people over to the site so they can see all of it. But like these social media giants and their like community standards do sort of force our hands on what we can post different places. And it's different. Yeah, degrees. I would like imagine. YouTube, anything goes on YouTube, for example, except for nudity. So like we can post most of our stuff there. But then Facebook, like they've got a million rules and it changes every six months because they have their own kind oh. of you know, internal reckoning going on with like <laughs> what's, what's allowed to go up there. And we're just in the middle of it. Um, but yeah, it has been a little bit fragmenting in the past few years to figure out how to like, because like, social media has been such a blessing for like what we do, but also such a huge curse at the same time. Like, it, like Facebook helped us blow up. There's no question. But then like sometime in the last five, six years, probably longer, like Facebook just clamped down and like sort of severed our audience on Facebook. Now we can't, you can't put a link to a, to our website on Facebook without getting throttled and Facebook asking you to, you know, pay up so you can put this post out. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been a, a double edged sword, but I think overall, overall good. I mean, I, I was, I was trying to think of uh, some of the, some of the cyanide happiness ca uh, cartoons that I'd seen in the past where, you know, they may not have had like graphic stuff, but the stuff was talked about was deep, you know? And so that leads me to have to ask this question. I have to ask this question. I know, and you maybe you'll admit it or not, but I know there's at least one, probably many more, that almost went to publication at the last minute. You're like, too much. There had to have been, so there mm. had to have been a couple that were just like, you did. You, see, I saw the smirk. I, I yeah, can tell it. Whether you, whether you want to admit it or not, tell me, give me a synopsis of one or two that you can, like, without getting yourself in trouble. What was one that was like, yeah, probably not. Cause I, cause that, that, that takes a lot to not to, to do that. So I'm curious. Could you, could you, uh, Ooh, I mean, so like there's probably thousands of these examples because we, um, me, Chris and Dave use this, like we have this Slack channel where we talk comic ideas. We pitch them to each other to kind of help, you know, workshop. And there's, yeah, there's tons of comics where somebody will post something either to get a reaction out of everybody or just to, to that goes too far. And we're like, nah, don't do that one. Well, I think that's that's good. That's like that's the gold mine we need to get into. Yeah, that's the that, real you know, content right there. Yeah, you should draft your apology video at the same time as you make the comic. Um, but yeah, but as far as the like the animations, like yeah, our writing room is pretty open. Um, like we're, everyone's allowed to pitch whatever they feel like. It's kind of a safe environment to just go crazy. And we have yeah, we have like one or two concepts that we'll just never make, not because they're so offensive. Like in that respect, it's because they're so disgusting that you wouldn't be able to monetize them. Like it's the kind of stuff where you, that would be the last thing we ever posted, and it would be us at the end waving goodbye, like well before the channel gets deleted. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing specific comes to mind. Nothing that I can nothing that I can describe on Twitch without your channel getting dinged. <laughs> You've probably never seen my channel if you think that's going to happen. No, but but <laughs> do you think what, what if there's like a nuclear option? What if like one of your guys like you guys have a falling out and they have screenshots? Like, are you are you worried about that at all? Is there like a is there like a like a blood pack there? 
And uh, honestly, I think we should take screenshots because that would make a really good coffee table book one day. Like all the rejected comics that never got made. <laughs> I mean, nuclear I option. Think, I, I think the fact that, like, yeah, we don't we don't punch down, we don't like we don't target people with our comics. I, I feel like we talk about things that are uncomfortable with our comics, like drugs and like disease and, and death and stuff. But yeah, we, I don't think we've ever done anything too far, um, unless you're a Facebook moderator, in case we've done a lot of things that are too far. But I think it just, it just depends on, on context. All like, right. Facebook I mean, I'm, like I'm not trying to get you to, to out yourself here. <laughs> yeah, it's not one of those streams. No, I'm not. I'm yeah. not a hit piece here. But you know, we, you, we were, I want to circle back to something we were talking about, and that's getting. Can- mm-hmm. Are you in a bathrobe? I am. I, I wasn't kidding. I woke up like 15 minutes. I ago. totally respect that. Why am I not in a bathrobe? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, why didn't I, I you tell went, me? Oh, I would have totally worn a bathrobe. I could put a jean jacket and no shirt on if you want. Um, all right. So speaking of canceled. This is something that I've come to a conclusion. I want you to hear me out and tell me what you think, since you're a kind of guy who does something that might uh, lead to cancellation. My theory is that people are uncancelable unless they allow themselves to be canceled. And what I mean by that is unless you do something seriously egregious, like I'm talking like way beyond the envelope, when you have fans – your fans are not going to cancel you if what you do is something that's kind of in line with your brand, right? They're going to be your fans no matter what. They're not going to just stop being your fan or stop watching you or reading your stuff. People who are not your fans who are going to try and cancel you are not, we're never going to be your fans in the first place. And if anything, you might bring some of those people over there due to the exposure. And the only way to cancel yourself is to go on the apology tour because now the people who never were going to like you anyways feel vindicated but don't like your stuff. And the people who do like you feel like you're a cop out and a softy and they'll leave because they don't believe that you stick to your convictions. What do you think about that theory? Well, I mean, I mean, th- first of all, I think like cancel culture itself is not super it's not real <laughs> it's, it's kind of a word we use to describe people who are being held accountable like um so yeah but as far as co- like there's different types of you know like canceling somebody like if, if i made a comic in 2009 that you didn't like chances are I, the comic was kind of kind of terrible maybe i shouldn't have made it but like there's there's thousands of more comics and I, and like I'm, it's been 15 years so there's that and and yeah i think i think you're right like digging up something old to throw at somebody like that's kind of a weaselly form of i don't know passive aggressive online warfare but um but yeah as, as far as like what we do I, I i do think we're a little bit cancel proof in that sense like oh you found a comic that offended you like i bet you could find a lot more if you dug even deeper <laughs> we've made tens of thousands um but yeah I, 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 there's comics i make that i look back at and i'm like wow that probably was a little bit too far but i just i leave it up because it's still part of <laughs> it's part of my repertoire it's part of who I was at the time, which was like an internet shock jock, <laughs> like cartoonist. Yeah, I, I feel um, like if you lean into it or just ignore it, 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 it can only help your case. Like it, right. it only, it, it's only a big deal <laughs> if you make it a big deal, and then you end up losing both sides. And I just feel like you guys are are, are at you know. But if South Park can keep doing it, though, I mean, how can Cyanide Happiness not? Right. Yeah. And even South Park, I'm sure there's episodes that have been like edited after the fact in certain markets. I think that's just the reality of like how content works these days. It's 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 really unfortunate. But I, I, I like the fact that you guys are also moving into uh, digital media, correct? You guys are moving into animated or have moved into animated series. It, what, what was what's that process like? Did you guys all agree it was time to move? Was there some like was there some some back and forth on that? Or is it like we've got to evolve with the market? I mean, there have been some ups and downs. Like, it depends which show you're talking about. Like, the the shorts we do on YouTube, like, have been incredible, like, all the way since day one. We've done some series for platforms that we found out later, like, weren't that great. And those platforms went out of business and took our shows with them, which is never fun. Like, it it sucks to make something like a two-hour piece of content and put it on a platform that costs four bucks a month that no one watches. And then the platform like bankrupt goes bankrupt a year later. That's happened to us a, a surprising number of times. We've made shows for CISO go 90, um, black pills. Like there's, there's this graveyard of streaming services from like the mid 2000, 2010s. Um, so yeah, we've had mixed, mixed results. Like it, it's been, we've done a lot of, a lot of like weird series and the cool thing is some of those series we've gotten the rights back. Like, have you guys seen, um, Purgatoni? like anyone in the chat, 
Like that's one that we made for um, a company called Black Pills. They went bankrupt. We got the rights back. And now it's on our YouTube channel. So now we, we're like, it's seeing an audience for the first time, like two years after we made it. Uh, yeah, I, I love making shows, like just in general, that the act of creating, even like regardless of how many people are going to watch it. I, I love the process of production. Now, there's always there's always that 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 like you said that fear of 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 having you know somebody you know reject you not with fear but having the rejection or putting all that work in and and nothing coming from it. I right. just what's the what's the wildest pitch that you guys almost brought that the last moment you just were like this is never going to work out. Um, there was this one concept called the Good Time Breakfast Bunch, and we've talked about it at panels here and there. But um, long story short, Denny's came to us through an agent we had at the time, and Denny's wanted to create an animated series about their menu, about all of the items in a Grand Slam. And I think the Robot Chicken guys ended up taking the deal because I remember seeing like some stop motion Denny's ads. But yeah, they pitched it to us, or they asked us for a pitch, and then we, we we're signed out in happiness. So we we just sat around and thought, what's the most like disgusting? offensive show like the aristocrats if it were a tv show about talking breakfast foods and we wrote this, this we didn't pitch this to denny's because like it it wasn't like a, the right deal for us at the time but we ended up writing it internally and joking around so much that we became fans of it ourselves we invented this show ironically and then we fell in love with it in true character sketches and all that and then we had an opportunity to pitch it to um to networks a few years later and we we, we made this whole pitch deck and sent it off and apparently our our management company at the time, like they got yelled at by a network. They thought it was a prank. <laughs> so like this guy was almost in tears pitching our show to them. Um, and we felt bad. We, we retweaked it like a couple of times, but yeah, that was a case. Um, I would still love to see that show. Honestly, I, I think it's funny as hell. It was about this guy named Billy who works like in a Denny's I guess, like or a waffle house. And he has these talking breakfast foods that only he can hear and they ruin his life. But it's it's yeah, so funny because day. the chat's the chat's blowing up because there's a there's a a running joke on the channel that if I if my stock pick or if 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 my options goes to zero I'm gonna have to go sell my butt behind Denny's and so the second <laughs> you said Denny's they all jumped on that because everyone here <laughs> says I'm very familiar with Denny's so listen there's nothing wrong with Denny's guys okay Denny's is is good but it depends on how dr if you're drunk you go to Waffle House if you're high you go to Denny's at least that's what I've been told I'm a parent a husband and a clean uh, family friendly streamer so I have no idea but at least that's what i have been told <laughs> ihop is where you take grandma that you want to treat her to a breakfast but she doesn't know the difference okay all right mm -hmm. now now that we got that out of the way uh real quick guys also don't forget last few submissions now because uh i know uh rob can't we, we know that we, we got this interview here but uh if you guys want to jump in exclamation point comic we're about to bring them up on screen rob's going to take a look at them tell you how terrible you guys are how trashy how unfunny and unoriginal you are but a couple of you are actually going to have some good ones and they're going to tweet it out so make sure you put those submissions and they are going to come up all right I have a couple more questions, Rob, before I, 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 I get you out of that rope. Wait, that actually sounded wrong. I didn't mean like get you out of the rope. Like I'm going to take the rope off. Like you like go. Do Let's just move on. All right. So from there, you got what I'm saying, right? You got you. you, 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 you you're buying what I'm selling here. OK, thank you. Um, all right. So last couple of things. Welcome to my stream uh, that I wanted to go over. So um, the, the only thing I have is, is that is that is that I want to ask you as like kind of like an advice, right? Like you've been doing this a hell of a lot longer than me. And the one thing that I find the most difficult about creating content is the monotony, the idea of it getting old and stale, whether it's like a writer's block or it's the feeling of I'm just repeating the same thing over and over again. I'm almost going to get burnt out. What do you think? at least in your opinion, has been the key to you being able to continue to do this and not getting that feeling of, I'm bored, this is old, this is just, I'm burnt out? I think the key, for me anyway, has been learning to let go and bring in more people. I think that's that's been the key. We've been through long stretches of our company's history where we took on too much and not necessarily, that's not necessarily bad because of getting overworked, which is also a problem. But it's also bad creatively for a project to only have one brain on it or or just a couple of brains. Um, some of the best decisions we made for the company were to hire people who are more talented than us, people who are funnier, mm -hmm. people who are better at animatics, people who are better at animation and artwork. I think that's sort of been like, like looking back, 
the, our most successful decisions involved um, collaboration and bringing more expertise into the fold instead of assuming that because we started the thing, because we created the thing, that we are the ones who know what, where it should go and what what the next short should be about. And like, yeah, and as a result, we've hired some incredible people who have just written some of our best shorts, who've helped produce and animate some of our best cartoons. And yeah, I think that's the main thing. And I think the second thing that I would say to somebody, like if I time traveled back to myself even, <laughs> is to always put the content first and put the business second. And that, I know that sound that might sound backwards because like you got to have a business model to succeed. But I think like without good content, without without the content being true, like there is no business model. Like you, you, I could have been doing this as a hobby for the last ten years, and I would probably still be doing it. Um, but the, the business part is sort of accidental. Like you might you might strike gold, and you might get lucky, but most people who make stuff for fun on the internet continue to make it for fun for a very long time before like opportunity strikes. So I think, yeah, that would be my, my other piece of advice. Yeah, no, I, I, that's what, that's, that's something I've struggled with too. Is like, I started doing this as a hobby and it just turned into this thing. And then it's like, okay, well, we'll go with it as long as I'm enjoying it, you know? And I just mm. sometimes get concerned that, you know, looking at the market and talking about stocks all the time, it's just like, that's why I've loved this interview series. Cause it's kind of broken it up. All right. So we're about to jump into the, uh, submissions here because, uh, I want you to get a couple look at these and I want these guys to feel like they get, <laughs> look what they saw me make. So they'll enjoy it. And the fact that they're going to have their workout is great. Um, but <laughs> Real quick, what was your favorite? Just to touch on what you just said, what was your favorite collaboration? Like, who was your favorite collaboration, or what company, or what work did you do? Um, honestly, yeah. Like, as far as voice acting, one of our favorite collaborators is Aaron Hansen, Ego Raptor. He's been doing voices for us here and there since the beginning. Um, he's another old Newgrounds guy. Um, always a blast to work with him. Like, he'll send over the he'll record the script itself, and then he'll send over an hour of like improv that we didn't ask for, <laughs> just just to fuck with us. <laughs> um, super treasure that guy uh but yeah i think one of the coolest projects that was a, like a true collaboration was um uh the, the stockholms which is a series we released last year on our youtube channel it's about a bunch of hostages in the bank who learned to become a family hence the stockholms um <laughs> so like that was um yeah, one of my favorite things that we've done that's actually sounds like a lot of fun i'm thinking of of, of that with uh well there's a movie um Oh God, it doesn't matter. All right. So, all right. Now that we're moving on to that, uh, like I said, we, you know, I want to make sure that we, we respect the time limits here, but I do have to get a few things off my chest. And one of them is, uh, I, 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 I'm always, every, every guest is supposed to teach me something, right? So <clears throat> I want you to teach me something that I don't know what it is. Hmm. I know you can't teach me to draw right now. Right. Yeah. So, um, let me ask you this. How old are you again? 35. 35. So you're my age. What do you use to keep your hair from falling out? Like falling out? Like all the like way? How do you keep these, lo these, these, lo these luscious locks? Because I am going bald. And so I mm. want you to teach me what products I need to use to make sure that I have a head of hair like you. Like Tom Cruise right now, actually. So I think it might be genetic because my grandfather, he he barely had a receding hairline like into his sixties. So I think some ma some manner of like time travel and convincing like your parents or your grandparents to maybe like meet somebody else, you know, f find find some some better some better genetics. That's that's I think that's the only thing that I could offer. But I do think eating your vegetables helps with hair loss. I think like there was a stretch during the pandemic where I definitely lived off of Oreos and coffee for a bit. And I noticed like a bit of hair loss. So like it could be dietary. Yeah. But Oreos and coffee sounds awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that's also, that's the, that's the counter argument. <laughs> okay. Well, either way, that's, that's how I feel. All right. So I'm going to start eating more vegetables, which I'm really bad at. I did buy these, uh, not an ad, but I bought these one a days and I've actually been feeling better ever since I took it. I feel like the oh, ultimate boomer great. because I'm taking one a days now. That's how old I've gotten. Now, being in your thirties and popping vitamins, like that's that's a plus. Like that, that that's uh, dude, me it's too. working. It's like mm -hmm. I, I feel like a little less like death now. All right, guys, <laughs> um, we are going. Uh, uh, and but also, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't say anything to my grandparents. I would go and invest the shit out of like all the small penny tech stocks back then. So oh, totally, you know, it you is time machine. You don't need a hairline. Yeah, I'd rather be hair. bald and rich than broke and have hair. So I mean, yeah, uh, I, I kind of feel model. like I'm half on half. Right. 
There's, I always tell these guys, there's no such thing as an ugly man, only a broke man. I know it's a terrible thing to say, but it's kind of true. Okay, so guys, we have 10, now 13 comics for review. So, mm. Rob, do you have the time to go through a couple of these? Let's go. All right, so before we bring this up, there has been over 50 submissions, and only 13 were good enough or allowed to be seen on here. So, what's the first one? Let's see. Ah, what a lovely day. Enough talk. That was inappropriate. I, I like this one. This is someone who's way too cheery in the year 2021 and needs to shut up. Like I feel like I, I agree, but I don't feel like I don't feel like it was mean enough. Yeah, I think I'm the guy in green though. Like this is this is a solid like six out of ten. Six out of ten. Okay, so so bangable, but not something you would tell your friends about. Okay, next. Okay, I like this. This there's a lot of subtext here. It, it's, it's actually this guy is a nerd but it's 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 sexy to be a nerd cool. i feel like this is undertones of a sex robot here so did he build the robot just so the robot could call him a nerd because that's his fetish yeah i, I mean, think there's a lot so. going back I here I, I mean there's people that pay people to step on their <clears throat> you know you know i mean like i mean I, I don't know i don't know maybe it's a fetish maybe that or maybe they always thought they were a nerd they don't have friends they want somebody to call them i don't know next one let's go you guys are disappointing you guys either went from like a zero to like a hundred you there's no in between here what do we got next i'm just not ready for a relationship right now well let's get this over with just kidding oh pranked okay I'm not sure. What um, this, this one's is. all right. This, this went so much better in my head than what. I, maybe it's the person picking them is is not picking the good ones. I don't know. Let's keep rolling them. These are these yeah, are these going. are horrible. I'm racist, <laughs> awesome. This one's good. This is a happy ending. I like this one. <laughs> all right, this one. <laughs> this one is good. <laughs> this one's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, this is good. <laughs> There's so much that could be said here. Oh my god, this is gonna get me canceled, but I don't care. This is actually pretty good. This is this is just far enough. All right, next one. <laughs> okay, this one wins. <laughs> I'll do this for <laughs> let me do it. Yeah. <laughs> but this is actually my favorite so far. This is one of the random comic generator it's comics. So true that, too. Oh that my wish god. I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Holy shit. we're not on the That's front good. page right now. All right, next one. Oh, Glad I'm finally out of that coma. Have you ever kissed a total stranger? Ooh. Okay. Ah, oh, boo. It's, just, it's, boo. Kind of, it's just kind of wholesome. Put your finger in my anus. You're a fucking idiot. Deal. Okay. It's pretty decent. <laughs> it's like normal yeah. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. I like the ones with the no words. It's a little weird, but all right, moving on. All right. It's very experimental. <laughs> very straightforward <laughs> very straightforward i feel like this is a lot of people's thanksgivings recently <laughs> it's decent i'm thinking of running for president and furthermore i'm a real piece of shit winner i mean he's a winner i think he's gonna win the, the, the election um but this is yeah, this is decent this is, this is my second favorite so far Son, I found a bag of weed under your mattress. You mean like in a sexy way? I'm a cop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. See, I can't. After the other cop one, I can't see it. It's, it's, it's just hard yeah. now. You are my best friend. I give up. Whatever, dad. Yeah, that's very domestic. Once again, the other dad one kind yeah. of outpaced this one. Sorry to yeah. shit on you guys, but here. <laughs> okay, double boners. You're both going to hell. I blame God for this. Yeah, I mean. It makes sense. Like I don't know if it's funny, but I get it. I, I get it too. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't think these people realize how dark we are <laughs> anymore. Yeah, they need to okay, we already saw this <laughs> one. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Uh, who is behind this? D d d d are we paying this production company money? All right. So <laughs> my three favorites are the cop one, the racist one, and the dad one. <laughs> I think, yeah, I would agree with you. I think the, the dad one, the, the dad punching, and I think the cop one are my top two. I think the, the cop one is, like, way up here. So is that is that the winner? I, yeah, I think so. It's too perfect. I wish I had thought <laughs> of this, like, as an actual comic. 
<laughs> yeah, really but you, you got yoinked. So congratulations to whoever made this one. You are now getting this published somewhere. Uh, they are going to take the credit for it. They're not going to credit you because that's not how this works. Um, yeah. And you use their you use their property, so you don't even have the IP to it. So congratulations for giving them a free funny comic. <laughs> and uh, they just yoinked your uh, stuff. Congratulations for that. Thank you for your sacrifice. Um, and obviously, if you're watching the stream, you're not uh, uh, you, you're not wealthy enough to afford a lawyer. So get wrecked, kid. Um, this is but, oh, yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is itself a lesson about uh, crowdsourcing. So there you go. Exactly. So we always teach boomer advice and a life lesson at the end of these streams. And you know what? We didn't have to. It kind of did itself. Here's a lesson, guys. <laughs> if you're good at something, never do it for free. Get mm -hmm. kid get wrecked you should have thought about that before. You didn't even water you should have watermarked it. Like you like, really, it's just <laughs> terrible. Um no, but seriously, uh, uh, you're gonna you're gonna what? Tweet that out, put it on the website. What are you gonna do? We're gonna put that on the official Explosum Twitter. And there if we you know go. Who, so if you we actually know who wrote it, we can or produced it. We can give a shout out to them too. Um, I mean, I could, or I could just uh, I could just say it was me, and then you know, like take their credit. But uh, but yeah. So what we'll do is is I'll find we'll find whoever it was, and we'll get them, and they will be. Um, they will be uh, uh, now. Watch everybody's gonna copy paste it in the in the channel. Uh, like an nft so they all try to get credit for it but uh <laughs> but yeah so um you know what's funny is almost almost 50 or 60 of these were submitted and those are the only ones that we were allowed to show on the stream that makes sense unbelievable but whoever that was uh uh to to jt if you could make sure that you uh you 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 give me a screenshot of who that person was so that we can make sure that they get it out uh but rob uh the, the only other two things i like to do before i end one of these uh interviews i know it was a short interview but uh i want to make sure that i at least get to the end of this and that's uh two things number one i know you kind of touched on it a little bit before but i really want to um i really want to uh, um you know kind of get your your what you would say if you could also have a time machine and go back mm -hmm. to 17 year old rob 16 19 year old rob whatever and you could write a single sentence on a piece of paper and leave it on your desk and you at that time would know it was your future self but that's all only one sentence that you could say to your your your, your past self what would that sentence be and you would know that it was you from the future and it was something serious what would that sentence or a couple sentences be and at what age am I in the past? 16 to 18, somewhere in that age range. All right. So if I, if I wrote down like purchase Bitcoin, I, that would be the most incomprehensible advice to somebody in the year. Well, you wouldn't have. There's no Bitcoin then. So you would have like, like, yeah. <laughs> what is this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hmm, that's, I mean, short, that's a good question. Short airlines? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If I was being practical, yeah. Like buy Apple. Um, but then my, as a kid, I'd be like, Oh, eat more apples. Okay. I guess I, I should do that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like that's, yeah, I've, I've kind of touched on it, but I, I think like, I, I would say this is probably very specific, but I thought about it a lot. Cause my mom was asking me this over Thanksgiving, actually, like if you could do college all over again, would you change your major? And I was thinking about mm -hmm. that specific question. Cause, um, in the past I thought like, yeah, I probably should have studied business. That would have given me a, like a head start on all of what I was doing, like business and making cartoons. Like that's that that fits together. Um, but like nowadays, I think like man, I really should have studied music music because like if I if I could see like the social media era and like the kind of stuff that blows up these days, and like mm -hmm. like I look at people like Bo Burnham and Tom Cardi, like the Australian TikTok guy, and I think like damn, I would love to be able to just like take these ideas I've done like for comics for years, but like transition that into like music and performance. Um, so yeah, I think like the one piece of advice I would give myself would be to like pursue music more and just become a streamer. I mean, yeah, shit, if I go. can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> I figure if somebody who's as boomer as me and it, it can, can get on and talk about stocks and have a few people watch them, I guess anybody can. All right. So you would study music would be your, would your, would be kind of your, your go back in time. And then the last thing I have to ask you, and this is something we've asked every single episode, uh, to every guest. And that is, I need you to give me three random letters right now c a h c a h all right well you have just picked a yolo now what that means is we are going to take those three letters you just picked cardinal health which is a very oh. interesting pick actually having a good day today and uh has been 
down really bad, but actually uh, seems to be turning a corner. So what we're going to be doing is is at the end of the day today, trading day, we're going to take the price of CAH, which is Cardinal <clears throat> Health, and we are going to track it until the market close next Tuesday. And whatever the percentage is, is what we're going to put in here and see who wins at the end. Now, just like uh, just like you taught them a lesson about you know getting stuff for free, uh, you win nothing if you win this, but it gives me content. So once again, it's just the butterfly effect. So things come full circle. So as of right now, only two of our guests have actually had the stock finish higher in a week than when they came on. One by four cents a share, the other by 54 cents a share. Uh, and so you are going to have Cardinal Health. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I think you might actually win this if the market doesn't die because you're the only one to come in and pick one on the on, on a dip on the market. So we'll see mm. how it uh, it plays out. Healthcare is big right now. And that is, yeah. uh, that is uh, you are our last guest. Uh, I just want you to know that, listen, I appreciate you coming on uh, uh, for the amount of time we had together. You were our season finale guest. And I, can I be honest with you? I'm actually super glad that you were late today because my stream is always scuffed. And there is no way that my last interview was going to have to go perfect. Because if it did, it would have seemed scripted and these guys would would have never forgiven me. So you actually improved this series. <laughs> and I appreciate that. I just wish I would have known you were in a robe because I would have totally matched you. Yeah, it was, it was either the robe or naked. I had to choose one. But yeah. And you <laughs> chose you the me. robe, you son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rob, the last thing is, is where can these guys find you? How can they reach out to you? We already, oh, by the way, last thing, guys, you guys also don't realize this, but uh, you gave him so much free traffic on his website. Good job. Um, go ahead and uh, give us a shout out for your socials and where these guys can find you if they want to follow you. Yeah, I mean, my name's on the screen there. You can type that in on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm on all of those. Um, follow me wherever. Follow me everywhere. Follow me in real life. <laughs> Anywhere you want. Oh, cool. Yeah, somebody just posted um, all of my socials in the chat there. So, Yeah, it's there one of my go. mods that think he's going to get paid, so he's really eager to help out, but he doesn't realize it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a charity job. Uh, but, Rob, mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming on. I really do appreciate it, um, and I uh, hope your back feels better. Uh, and uh, looking forward to seeing the reaction from someone in here's uh, comic being, uh, being rolled out as why well. I'm going to be spending the rest of the day in my Discord looking at how offensive and terrible these guys are because uh, there is no one that has a darker, more cynical sense of humor than someone who bleeds out their money every single day for years. Absolutely. Well, yeah, thanks a lot for having me. It's an honor to be the season finale. Rob, appreciate you and uh, good luck and looking forward to uh, to what your next endeavor is uh, and hopefully uh, a, a stocky uh, cyanide happiness shows up one day. It will. I guarantee it. <laughs> what do you mean his back hurts from carrying this interview? Who are you people that watch my show? Who are you people that watch my show? Rob, just, just go before it gets worse. Just go. Just, just, right. just thank you. Thank you. Peace. All right, guys. Uh, this was a, a, a very interesting end to the season. Um, I don't think I would have it anymore. Um, but, uh, but, uh, thank you to the production team for carrying me this entire season. And, uh, I look forward to potentially a next season if Twitch can afford me. Uh, and, uh, I'm looking forward to, it cause I do think that it is going to, uh, uh, be even better, uh, as we, uh, as we have progressed. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out and being here, uh, with me, uh, for this seven part series. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, it was good. Uh, yeah, he, he was, he was definitely in the, uh, Rob was definitely in the man crush, um, uh, metaverse as it were. I liked him. He was a cool guy. Uh, hopefully his back and whatever he took for it gets through. So, uh, guys have a great, great day to the people in chat that are being toxic. I love you too. Uh, but, uh, we'll see you guys soon. And, uh, as always, as always stay green DJs. Maybe we'll see you in season two. Bye. Let it go.